we're stripping away a lot of the shoulds. A lot of the shoulds, this life should look like this, this year should have looked like this. And instead, we're allowing ourselves to live in the present, to be where we are, to understand this is our reality. And by bringing in flexibility to our life, it also allows us to start being flexible, start getting scrappy with our business, start learning new things and trying new things. Welcome back to Happiness and Progress. I'm your host, Danielle Craig. I'm an Emmy Award winner, a journalist, a mom, wife, and you know what I like to say, just a person looking for more joy in the everyday. This podcast is brought to you by the Mail Tribune. You can find more podcasts at mailtribune.com. Let's get into today's episode. I'm so excited about this because I think this is one of the foundational elements of finding more joy in your life. In fact, it is the topic of my very first episode on happiness and progress. So we're talking about expectations. Expectations. Expectations are joy killers, (laughs) happiness killers. I wanna take you back to when I started this happiness and progress journey. It was 2017 and it wasn't so much that I realized I needed a big life change like leaving my job or that I wanted a bigger house or a better car or a bigger paycheck or whatever the things are that we tell ourselves we need more of to be happy. I just realized I needed to alter my expectations a little bit because expectations are directly linked to our happiness. So. It was 2017 and I was really excited because I was pregnant with my third baby. And my expectation of how a pregnancy would go had been built in the several years prior. I had had two pregnancies. I got the two lines on the pregnancy test. I went in, I went to the OB, I saw the little bean in the ultrasound and the little heart beating. That was my expectation of what a pregnancy looked like, how it started. That is not the reality of what happened for me. I got the two lines on the pregnancy test, but then when I went into the OB's office, there wasn't a little jelly bean on the ultrasound and there wasn't a heartbeat. I, as you can imagine, was devastated. Uh, My expectation had been so high. I mean, I, I was thinking I was gonna bring a human into the world. My expectation was so high and it was met with a reality that wasn't even off the ground. I wasn't even close to where I had expected to be. This sent me into a huge deep depression. And obviously part of this was hormonal and part of this was um, postpartum depression, which if you're dealing with something like that, you need to go see a doctor and get help for that. Um, But another part of this was just that my expectation had been so high and I was let down so immensely. And what I started doing through that cloud of depression and those depression goggles on, I started looking at my entire life as an expectation failure. I started to compare my job and my relationship and my family and the money I made and the house I lived in and all the things about my life. I just started comparing it to some expectation that I'm not totally sure I had even set in the first place but I started to say, yep, here's my reality way down here. And there was my expectation, not even close. I wanna be clear when I'm talking about expectations, I'm not talking about goals. I think you should have goals for your life. I think that's really important. I think it's important to have hope for your life. But when we have these expectations, it's not like a goal. It's more of like a thing you think you should be doing and maybe have thought about this, but you don't really have a roadmap on how you would have even gotten there. This is not a goal. This is an expectation based on shoulds that you think your life should look a certain way. One of the problems with having expectations that we're totally inflexible about is that we miss the beauty in the present moment. If the present falls just a little short of our expectation, like we write it off as totally insignificant and insufficient. It's no longer important to us. This this life, this year, this week, ugh, one thing bad happened, and so we're done. <laughs> so back in 2017 when this happened to me, the day of or maybe the day after my miscarriage, I went on Facebook and I wrote something like, well, 2017 is the worst year ever. I wrote off the entire year 
because of one bad piece of information or one bad thing that was happening in my life. I really, really, really do not want to downplay a miscarriage. It was absolutely devastating. So, so hard. But I wrote off my entire 2017 because of it. I sent this out into Facebook and the universe at the very beginning of the year, actually the day after we got home from Disneyland. This is the worst year ever. I don't care if I was just at Disneyland because I just heard that I am having a miscarriage and so I'm writing off this entire year. And as I sent out that message to Facebook and the universe, uh, the universe delivered because the next several months were very difficult. ER visit after ER visit, medical issue after medical issue. Uh, it was a very, very difficult year. But I never even gave it a chance. Starting in the very beginning of March, I wrote off the entire year. The problem with doing this is it's our life. It's our lives. Every moment matters. How many moments are we going to write off because something bad happened? Because the in-between moments of devastation, that matters. There's not an insignificant part of our lives. How many years will we write off because something is not going the way we want it? How many years will we declare on social media that this is the worst year ever and I'm out? We're not giving the in-between moments of things we don't like a chance. And of course, I'm talking about a miscarriage here as my example. A miscarriage is a huge thing. Mourn that. Feel awful in that because that is a very, very huge thing. It's a very hard thing. But I've noticed we do this <laughs> about just about anything going on. Um, and we have for years on social media we've been doing this. I've talked a lot about this. About two months after my miscarriage, my husband's heart stopped for eight seconds. And honestly, in that eight second gap of time where all I'm hearing is that machine just flatlining, it woke me up. I mean, truly, it was like God grabbing me by the shoulders, looking me straight in the eye and being like, wake up. Like, wake up. This is your life and you've written off an entire year. But you got to get back in it and you got to start enjoying these moments that are just passing you by. This is your life. Stop waiting for your expectations to be met to enjoy this life. A couple of episodes ago, I talked to my guest about Paris syndrome. This thing is so bizarre. This is basically when someone goes to Paris expecting love in the air and romance and what they've seen in the movies. And I, I don't know, like people dancing around the streets and roses going everywhere. And they get to Paris and it's kind of just like a regular city. <laughs> when this happens, this can actually impact people so intensely that they have to be hospitalized. What's mind blowing is some of this shows up physically in people. Uh, there have been cases of delusions and anxiety, feelings of prejudice. And in a lot of these cases, the tourists who are there in Paris have to be flown home with medical care on the airplane. This is such a huge problem specifically for people from Japan who visit Paris. The Japanese embassy has actually set up a 24-hour helpline for people who are feeling this extreme culture shock to get help, to be able to find a hospital in Paris. It's just, it's unbelievable when you start to think about how our expectations can impact us physically. Isn't that insane? So what are we supposed to do? Some researchers in London showed lowered expectations will help with happiness. They basically had a ton of people playing games and they found that it wasn't the outcome of how much money someone had or how many points they had, but instead how it compared to the expectations based on earlier events in their life, how that compared to what they were winning. So if they were winning more than they expected, they felt good, even if it was a small amount. If they were winning less than they expected, they didn't feel good. So what are we supposed to do? Lower our expectations? You know what I think? We just gotta throw out expectations altogether. One of my favorite pieces of advice is to throw out the expectations and change that to preferences. I wanna be able to go out into my life and have hopes for things that are great. I don't wanna go out and be like, 
I've lowered my expectations, so I'm not even expecting a gift for my birthday. Because that's kind of lame, right? You want to be able to have a preference of getting a gift for your birthday. And if it doesn't happen, okay, fine, whatever. It's not going to ruin your life. But you also, having a preference opens up a door to having a conversation and making changes. And you can say, hey, you know what? I really would like a gift for my birthday. <laughs> that's a very simple example. But I think it's important that we still have hope for things in our lives. And by just lowering expectations, I think we kind of just are like, oh, okay, whatever, I'm, I'm throwing in the towel on life. But I don't think that's the key. I think the key is to stop expecting things and to instead prefer it. When something doesn't go as we expected, <laughs> That is very inflexible. It's a very hard sale to the brain that, oh, I'm fine. But when something doesn't go how you preferred, you can be a little flexible. You can kind of work with things and you can kind of help things evolve to a place where you would prefer them. They go to according to plan. So let's take the year 2020. <laughs> Has this gone as planned or as preferred or as expected for any of us? No, absolutely not. We have been in a pandemic for more than 100 days. I have been in my house with three children for more than 100 days. It has been really hard. And you know what? It has not been what we expected. We did not expect to be losing jobs. We did not expect to be stuck at home. We did not expect to be homeschooling our kids. We did not expect to be blowing through savings or closing businesses. A lot of hard things have happened this year. We did not expect this. And as far as expectations go for what was supposed to be this grand, amazing 2020 vision year, we're not even close. We are not even close. And the reality is that is a hard pill to swallow. It is hard to look at 2020 and not call it a total waste of a year and just like write off the entire year because it has been a hard year. But what if we change our wording a little bit? What if we say, I would not have preferred this. I would not have preferred to have to get scrappy with my business. I personally would not have preferred to have to cancel hip live I would not have preferred to homeschool my kids. I would not have preferred to cancel my trip. I would not have preferred whatever it is, whatever it is that happened in your life. But that's where we're at, right? That's where we are. And by changing our expectations to preferences, we're getting, we're stripping away a lot of the shoulds. A lot of the shoulds. This life should look like this. This year should have looked like this. And instead, we're allowing ourselves to live in the present to be where we are, to understand this is our reality. And by bringing in flexibility to our life, it also allows us to start being flexible, start getting scrappy with our business, start learning new things and trying new things and being a little more comfortable being in the present. If you're a parent, you've probably already practiced this. You know, you're really excited about something and then you present it to your kid and they're like, meh. <laughs> right? So if that's an expectation, then you can feel really bad as well. Um, you know, if there are toddler parents out there, I know you've been there. I mean, have you ever cut a triangle sandwich and little did you know your toddler wanted a rectangle sandwich? It's kind of the same thing. So about a year ago, I took my kids to a Disneyland character lunch. I was so excited. It was going to be so magical. I'd already taken my oldest. He loved it so much. It was just pure magic. And the idea was three times the kids, three times the magic, right? So I just expected like so much love with these characters and hugs and pictures. And it was going to be amazing and it was going to be beautiful. And we get there and one of my kids really didn't like the experience, was like jumping up and down underneath the table, didn't even like the characters running through the table. I mean, it was, it was just, honestly, it was a disaster. And I left there feeling so bleh. I felt so awful. I was like, wow, look, like this is the kind of, this kind of behavior and I can't do things with my kids anymore. And just bleh, bleh. I was just, I felt awful. I didn't feel awful because of my son's behavior. I felt awful because I had expected 
this level of magic that was three times as high as the first time I went to a character dinner with my first and, and only son at the time. Now I was expecting three times the magic and really, was I gonna get three times the magic because I expected it? My mind had painted a picture of shoulds. It should be this way. And because of that, I had less flexibility with my son's behavior and understanding where he was and what was going on with him mentally. But when I changed that expectation of this perfect behavior and this perfect magical day to a preference, I was able to meet my son where he was. I mean, how important is that? Just as a parent, imagine that. Being able to meet my son where he was was way more important than any should being achieved. So switching out that expectation for a preference. With that, I want to thank you for being here on Happiness in Progress.